Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Jerry Lotto of Synopsys. We're going to talk today about 100G Ethernet at the edge. Jerry, there have been lots of changes that have been going on at the edge. When we first heard about it, it was really this sort of vague distance between the cloud and the endpoint. What's happening there? Is this really starting to take shape? Yes, um, the edge is becoming much more sophisticated, probably because of the adoption of AI by many companies, by the ability to do a lot of post-processing that allows local data to remain local rather than being uploaded to a data center. That allows a much more concentrated upload to central processing. Because there's a cost to moving all that data, right? We have lots more data and trying to send all that stuff to the cloud and wait for it to come back with the results takes time as well as resources. Absolutely. Latency that we just can't afford in uh, environments like industrial floors and automotive applications. But a lot of the post-processing tends to be afterthought and getting additional value out of data. Let's take a closer look. Okay. Jerry, what are we looking at? This first slide really just talks about how the need for multiple sources of data and the amount of data that's being processed throughout the environment has been growing at an uncontrolled pace. The innovation that's fueled by semiconductor and software advantages is driving a lot of data processing. But despite that, high-speed Ethernet above 100 gig remains a rarity in edge computing. Why is that? It's because the cost of processing data faster than that is very high, and it makes sense within a data center and between data centers, but not necessarily on the edge. One of the purposes of the edge is to pre-process data, to create aggregation that is meaningful and useful for post-processing. When the edge becomes smarter, a lot of that local data can remain local, or it can be aggregated with AI in a way that allows only conclusions to be uploaded to the cloud. So how fast does this have to run? I mean, you think about the edge and, and people really want to do a lot more locally now than they did in the past. And that was really where this whole idea came from. But there's also some economic limits to where they can go with this, right? Because now they have to say, okay, this is going to be even too expensive for the edge as well. Yes. That's absolutely the case. Edge infrastructure tends to be very limited, but there are many more edge environments than there are data centers, orders of magnitude more. And so the cost of the infrastructure needed for high-speed Ethernet becomes completely prohibitive in those environments. So where do you see this going in terms of speed? Edge environments tend to use a lot of the features of Ethernet that are not available at speeds higher than 100 gig. And they also tend to use individual servers to aggregate data, act as firewalls or as smart routers. And if you look at the infrastructure of the individual server, PCIe, which is where the adapters are located, only began to support 100 gig adapters with PCIe version three. The sweet spot uh, with today's servers between four and five allows 10, 100 gig adapters to be served by eight lanes or four lanes. And even with the latest generation of PCIe six, which is just coming to market now, it's not going to be every server that's going to be able to support 200 gig. You know, for a long time, everybody thought Ethernet was passe and it was basically going to be replaced by something faster. Why did this come about to the point where it's now almost ubiquitous and there are different revs coming out, can even go much faster? It's cost and it's the internet. 
the internet is the infrastructure over which all of this is supported. And so whether it's wireless or wired, ethernet is ubiquitous. And certainly important to understand that all of the variations and enhancements to ethernet are supported in speeds up to, but not much beyond 100 gig. Things like TSN features, long haul ethernet cabling, cost effective switches and routers, and of course security is an important aspect of edge computing as well. And security is a really big issue for the whole edge, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons that people have adopted the edge is they don't necessarily want to send all their data to the cloud. That's true. But if you think about the edge, those are uncontrolled environments to a large extent. And bad actors have physical access to some, if not many of them. And so it becomes important to protect against the kinds of invasive hardware attacks, communication attacks, and uh, as well as software attacks that are coming from every direction. Is there a public edge and a private edge, almost like what we see with private cloud and public cloud? The only feature that characterizes the edge is diversity. So... There are public environments, there are private environments, there are isolated environments, and there are accessible. And that's why technology for security like MacSec is so important, to ensure that traffic is encrypted on every link. That way, passive observation does not reveal the data that's being transferred. And the piece here that becomes important is is not just data in motion, it's when you're encrypting and decrypting as well too, right? It's, It's the entire chain. MacSec is the solution for a link. It encrypts data as it transfers from one link to another, but it can be daisy chain. So you can do end to end encryption with MacSec until the data gets into an environment where it becomes secure. And does this need to be updated on a regular basis like every other security problem that we've ever seen? MaxSec is a very flexible technology. It allows for public key encryption between links and prevents data from being replicated or observed in transfer. Jerry, you talked about the edge getting smarter. What does that actually mean? It means that AI processing, machine learning and AI is getting into infrastructure on the edge. If you think about cars, uh, industrial floors, any kind of decision making that can be done on the edge and not rely on the cloud is going to be better kept there but you still want the value of getting those conclusions uploaded to the cloud. So I think that putting intelligence into environments on the edge is the primary reason why edge computing is getting more and more complex. In the past, when we looked about where a lot of the learnings came from and a lot of the advances, they came from the data center. So we've got some of the most complex data centers sitting up in the cloud that have ever been in existence. Is some of that knowledge coming down to the edge and is alternatively is actually some of the stuff that's going on the edge going up into the cloud as well? Absolutely. If you think about the way AI works, there is building a model and there's using a model. On the edge, you're using models. And those models are collecting data and building databases that can then be uploaded to a data center in order to build a better model. And it's an iterative process. Inference is what goes on at the edge. Training goes on in the data center. And so when inference requires a built model, it's collecting data. And that data then can be uploaded to the data center for additional training and building new models. So you're actually looking at this from the standpoint of this is one giant 
compute problem that is being handled in multiple stages. That certainly is overlaid on on the edge cloud paradigm. Jerry Lotto, thanks for a really interesting discussion. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be here.